Yo, what is up guys? Samuel here from Tech Journal. Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a 4K action camera tutorial. Now I know what you're thinking. Why are we doing another tutorial? Well, the reason being the last video did very well, but unfortunately I felt like it wasn't the best content that I could have provided. Um, so that being said, I thought I'll do another tutorial with more information. I also created a, an instructional guide that you guys could download for free, link in the description, and basically goes through uh, the settings, how to connect it to the app, and um, all the things that you need to know. I also want to mention is that you might not find a specific setting in this guide. Uh, this guide is for a very generic 4K action camera, so you might not find a specific setting that you need, so just keep that in mind. But that being said, let's jump into the video. Okay, so this is the 4K action camera and I'll guess I'll start off with how do you take it out of the case. Um, so all you have to do is kind of pull from up here and then this kind of comes off. Take this out and the camera should come out. Now most of these 4K action cameras require an SD card, either they'll come with the camera or you might need to buy them separately. Now to insert the SD card, um, all you have to do, insert it through this slot and you push in. To turn on the camera, press the power button and it should turn on. Now, as you can see, it's on the video uh, button. Um, and so I guess we'll start off by going through all the settings. Um, so I'm going to be pressing this mode button, um, which allows you to change. So here we have camera, here we have burst mode, and then we have the timer, and then settings, and then to select, you press this top button. So let's go through all the settings. So video resolution allows you to choose the quality of the camera. So you can go 4K, uh, 1080p. Personally, I think that um, having a higher FPS, so 60 frames per second, uh, looks pretty good. Um, this camera is a 4K, 10 frames per second. In my opinion, isn't the best quality, even if it says 4K. Now video looping, there's also arrows um, to go up and down. So video looping is often used on dash cams. So there's always a continuous loops and it records to three or five minutes per video. And if the card is full, the camera will delete the older files and it will always have room for new, for new um, content. So it's in this continuous um, recording. You can turn it off and on. Uh, timestamp, it adds a timestamp to the video so you can have date or time. Exposure um, changes the brightness of the camera. So if you go to a positive, uh, the brighter the quality will be. If you go to a neg negative, um, the darker the quality it will be. So it's the brightness. Photo resolution, like video resolution, is where you change um, the quality of the photo. So having a wider um, image, um, you can do that there. So burst mode, it allows you to, with one shutter button, um, it allows you to take multiple pictures at once. So here I have, whoops. So burst mode, it takes three photos um, in one shutter. So time lapse allows you to select how long until it takes a picture. So um, say you select five seconds, every five seconds it'll uh, take a snapshot. Um, and if you do that for a duration of say two hours, so every five seconds in that two hour period, it'll combine all the pictures and it'll create this time lapse. So continuous lapse is where the camera continuously records until you manually stop it. So power frequency is where you can prevent camera flicker. So depending on your country, you can select either 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, me living in Australia, um, we use 50 hertz 
and that prevents some camera flicker so it's quite interesting how uh, that works um, you can do a bit of research on that but um, you can see which frequency your country uh, uses and selects it based on that so language is where you select the uh, language of what you want the camera to be um, date and time is where you set the day and date and time sound indicator this is where you could have noise of the beeping so I tend to have this off because I find this um, noise <laughs> quite annoying and you can put sound so when you press the shutter it does that sound upside down literally flips the screen upside down so maybe you have a mount where it's on the car and it records like this you can flip the screen upside down um, screensaver screensaver is where you can save your battery by letting your camera kind of black out um, it doesn't turn off the camera but it just blacks out the screen and you can select how long until it blacks out power saver it's kind of like screensaver but um, it shuts off the camera completely format is where you format your SD card for the camera doing so does delete all your footage so you might want to save that before you do so reset just resets all the settings for the camera and version is where you can see the camera version as you can see this is the action cam h9 now the next thing i'll be going to is how to connect it to the app The first step you want to do is turn the Wi-Fi on the camera. To do so, you want to press down on the arrow key for about 5 seconds. Now you should see waiting for Wi-Fi connection. On your smartphone, you want to go onto Wi-Fi settings. You should see your camera pop up. It may require you to enter a password. The password should be 12345678900. Press join. Once it's connected, you want to go onto the Easy iCam app. It should say connect. As you can see, the camera is now connected and I could move the camera around and it views it on my phone. While filming this video, I did encounter a problem. The problem was that it wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi if it had the micro SD card inside the camera. If I remove the SD card, it connects it to the camera and I could use the app, but I can't record or take pictures because there's no SD card available. Now this issue never used to happen. I'm not too sure why it does this now, it used to never do this and I guess I kind of have a faulty camera. I'm not too sure if you guys have this problem but it is a bummer and I guess the only way to export footage is via the SD card reader. This camera is about 4, 5, 6 years old and um, it's, it's a shame that uh, this feature doesn't work anymore. There are three ways of exporting footage. The first way is using a micro SD card and a card reader. And the second way is using the app, the Easy iCam app, and going into My Gallery. If you have a card reader, insert the micro SD card into the reader and plug it into your computer. If you go into My Computer, you should see your camera pop up. Open the folders, go through the directories, and you should be able to copy your footage onto your file. Now if this was working you should be able to go into your gallery and save all your files onto your phone. Now it's unfortunate that I had an issue where the camera couldn't connect to the phone because it had an SD card um, which normally shouldn't happen but I guess I do have an older model and that feature doesn't really work anymore. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I also want to mention is that you can download the guide that I created for free. It's unfortunate that some of the features don't work in this camera like the smartphone. Comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.